Hey guys, today's video is about Hawaii small mom and pop markets. And I'm not talking about grocery stores or anything. It's just that corner store or the store down your street that you would go to when you were a kid to get awesome snacks. And they still exist today. And um, they also have, you know, little things you can grab if you forgot to get it at the supermarket. Little canned goods, some chips, soda, stuff like that. So they're kind of like convenience stores, but a little bit more unique and has a little bit of nostalgia to them. If you were a kid and you rode your bike to the store or after school, you walked to the store um, to get either musubis, you could get almond cookies, just things that you can't get anywhere else. And nowadays they're specializing in much more bigger items such as poke bowls and just stuff that you can't get from the other markets in your neighborhood. So the first stop is in the punch bowl area. It's called Kamamalu Market. It's uh, right below the National Cemetery of the Pacific or below Papakolea. If you're not familiar with it, it's right on um, in Paoa. Um, the closest I can tell you is maybe South School Street and Queen Emma Street going into Punchbowl. It's a side street market right next to the Hongguanji. And um, they specialize in their homemade musubis. And um, it's just a little cute store with drinks, chips, and other items that you might need in your household. But a lot of people have voted this one of the top musubis on Oahu. Um, I really like 7-Eleven musubis. Even though they're from 7-Eleven, they're one of the best musubis ever. But it's got that nice spam, nori, and rice. This one's a simpler one though. It doesn't have the awesome teriyaki sauce that you would expect. It's just that nice fried crisp spam. That's what makes it. And just that simple taste of the rice and nori. So let's dig in. Just simple nostalgia, no teriyaki. Some people might think it's dry, but it's just got that homemade taste like you made it at home. Nice and crispy. That's how I like my Spam. Uh, the nori kind of has a hint of sesame seed oil brushed on it. And of course, you got to have your Hawaiian sun. This is the Lily Koi Lychee, one of my favorite ones out of them. Besides the passion orange, really delicious. Definitely like an after-school snack that kids get. Your Hawaiian sun drink, your musubi, maybe some lihimoi, and you're good to go. That hit the spot. It's not genius in culinary cuisine or anything like that. Just simple food that back in the day when you're poor, you whipped up something and made an awesome musubi. Great after-school snack or something you just need to grab on the go in the morning. Uh, for breakfast or something that, like that. I also got a bag of boiled peanuts. It's a staple in Hawaii, especially in a small mart like that. I've never had their peanuts, so hopefully it's good. They seem like they're not boiled to death. Gotta suck out the juice. Pretty good. I like the way they're boiled. They're not mushy. It's boiled just right where it still has a little crunch. That's the way I like my boiled peanuts. Got a good salty brine. It could use a little bit of star anise in there. That's what I prefer. But overall, a pretty good peanut. Juicy, salty, delicious peanuts. Great, awesome local snack as well. Everything I had from there, even though it's very simple, was delicious. The only con is parking really sucks in front of there. There's probably about, maybe you could fit five cars in front of there and it also shares a building with a laundromat. So parking can be tough, but if you live in the area, then you know that this is the place for some awesome grinds. And they also have good leaky moys and, uh, you know, gummies and stuff like that. Sorry, I didn't get the uh, prices, I forgot, but I know the musubis are super cheap. They're probably like, a dollar something. I know the one with the egg and futakake is probably like $2.25 or something like that. They do do a spam with egg. And the reason I didn't get the price was um, I paid with my credit card. There is a $10 minimum, but uh, 
I didn't press the receipt button, so it didn't come through, so sorry. But everything in these markets are pretty inexpensive, and that's the beauty of it. You get an awesome homemade snack that's pretty affordable um, in terms of snack-wise. Some places that make um, dishes may be a little bit more expensive, but it's unique to that specific market. I know there are tons of markets around the island, and I still have a bunch in my head that I would like to visit for another video, but let's go to our next market and check out what that's about. Hey guys, our next stop is called Pacific Supermarket. It's in the Waipahu area, in the Waipahu shopping plaza. Um, it's one of my favorite places to go to to get any Asian item if you want to cook at home. They've got tons of great produce to cook Thai food, Filipino food, etc. Um, great veggies from cow peas to eggplants to lemongrass and all the Thai chili peppers, green papayas, you got it. They, um, they have awesome selection of other items such as star anise, lentils, mung beans, tofu sheets, different types of soy sauce, and a great array of fish, uh, fresh, fresh fish that they'll clean for you. And so that's why when you enter, it super stink, but you get used to it. It's all just the fish. It almost smells like, you know, going to a fish market in Chinatown. But what people don't know is they have a lot of items, if you go early, that are uh, for sale that are pre-cooked and one of my favorites are the fried shrimp and the fried pork which is almost like a roasted pork and it is great goodness look at that and it's pretty affordable you get a whole tray of it and they're all different prices because they're different weights it goes by uh, weight so let's dig into this awesome roast pork Mm, crunchy skin, delicious. I did come a little later in the afternoon, but when I grabbed both of these trays, they were still a little warm and hot. So I don't know if the thing you're sta sitting on is a warmer, but it didn't look like it. it. Just looks like a shelf. But it's crunchy, it's good, it's porky, fatty goodness. The only thing I wish is it came with a side of rice or something, but these are more to take home and uh, make your own rice at home and eat it there. So if you're ever in a bind for dinner and you don't know what to make, this is an option to come here and get a tray of their roast pork, their chicharron. They have fried salmon, fried tilapia, and the shrimp. So you can grab a bunch to make dinner and you don't have to cook. So the going rate for today was $13.29 a pound for the roast pork. So for this tray, it was $6.98. Again, each tray is different. It's just like buying meat from the meat market. So um, it had like a half pound weight for this about. All right, next is the fried shrimp. Also a little messy to eat, but it's one of my favorites. So let's try it. So this is their fried shrimp. It's delicious with the head on. It's a little bit messy because you got to peel the shell off, but I just like it. It reminds me of salt and pepper sh shrimp from a Chinese restaurant. It's got a good flavor. It's a simple salt flavor, nothing fancy to it, but it's got a little breading on the side, which gives it a little bit of a crunch and it's just so delicious. Some people will say they fry it so crisp. You can eat the shell and the tail, but I'm not totally into that, but you could. Um, it is crispy, so I just like to peel it, and, but it's got a delicious flavor. One of my favorite things to eat at Pacific Supermarket. So the going rate for the shrimp today is $15.29 a pound. Sounds expensive, but these shrimp are light, but when you eat them, they got a lot of meat on them. So it's $5.12 for this particular tray. Some were a little bit more expensive. So... Um, yeah, I think it's a deal. It's great to take home and have a meal there, but just be warned that they don't give you utensils because these are intended to be taken home to eat. So I have my own utensils in my car, but if you don't have chopsticks or whatever, then you're gonna have to eat them with your hands. So we'll go to our next stop. All right, our next stop is just right down the road and it's called Ni Superette. A lot of people call it Ni'i Superette, but I, it was confirmed by the owner, Stephen. He's a great guy. He was talking to me and showing me around the place um, that it's Ni. It's Japanese for two. 
and there was another character next to their name if it's written in Japanese, which means well. So two wells, that's what his uh, surname means, which is cool history. Anywho, it's been there for over 100 years, and uh, he explained that they had a liquor store on the side where they had the other part of his family, the Kato's, move in to sell sake. Uh, they were known for craft beers and such, but he told me just recently they got rid of all their alcohol, no tobacco, and they're starting a um, new concept where they're doing health drinks and energy drinks without uh, the chemical caffeine. They have keto items, uh, things that you can't find anywhere else. And what I thought was cool was he's partnering up with smaller businesses, mom and pop businesses such as he, but in the mainland and selling their products. So it's a pretty cool concept and they're collaborating together. So some of these items you see in his store are, uh, you know, he tasted them and they're verified good and he's helping their small business as well as they are helping him. So we're going to try a couple of interesting stuff, but they also sell uh, you know, your typical lihimoi and all that stuff, local snacks, and they have um, some poke. They have taco poke, ahe poke, uh, muscle clam poke, and imitation crab poke, and also some dried ahi. So let's take a taste of the poke first because I don't want it to go bad. It comes in these um, smaller sized pre-packaged plates. They have some that are heavier. You can just tell the lady at the front that you want more or, uh, you know, something with more of a weight if you want more poke. But this one is pretty cheap. It's only a quarter pound and it is $4.61. And it looks pretty plain. It's just got the um, green onions on it. But on the side, you get your shoyu to mix it all in. So let's take a taste of this. The great thing is I think this little superette uh, that is old school is a great place if you're in the Waipahu area and you're looking for something healthy to eat um, or a snack while you're working and you're on the go. These are perfect little snack or lunch size portions and everything in there to be eaten is just like a grab and go convenient kind of thing but they're healthy so let's take a taste of this poke it looks very fresh hmm you know it's plain because it's just shoyu poke but it's just got that old school delicious vibe you don't need to be fancy and put all kinds of weird toppings on it it can be simple as shoyu and fresh ahi with a little bit of green onion and you're good to go. It is delicious. All good parts of the fish, no grizzly weird parts, and it tastes fresh and good. All right, next is the dried ahi. I asked for a smaller portion since I've been eating all these other things. Um, this was only $3.46. Usually it's dried aku, but let's take a taste of it. Little morsels. Mmm. Nice and salty seasoning, almost like a beef jerky. A little bit different from dried aku, where when you bite into it, the outside's dry and the inside's very moist and kind of sticky. This one tastes like delicious fish jerky. It's flaky and kind of falls apart because it gets stringy, just like how beef jerky gets, but in a good way. <clears throat> it's delicious. And this would be perfect for somebody that's keto, or even if you're not keto and you eat starch, it's low fat because it's ahi fish and rarely has any fat in it. So a great snack if you're hungry and it's better than stopping at 7-Eleven. Uh, that's blasphemy because 7-Eleven has great food too, but this is good as well, but it's healthy and it's better than eating something fatty that you shouldn't be eating. And you know what I like? All of this stuff like the ahi, the price is actually very inexpensive. I mean, for dried ahi, $3.46, how can you go wrong? All right, something interesting. This is uh, avocado that's freeze-dried. He told me this was one of their most popular items lately with their new item line. So let's try it out. He said it tastes amazing and you would never think so. So here it is. 
kind of looks like freeze-dried ice cream or a Sanrio eraser that was left in the sun. Hmm. You know, it's interesting, very interesting texture, but it's got, I guess because it's freeze dried, it's got everything condensed flavor wise, and it's got more of a nutty oil taste in a good way. Like I think all the oils of the actual fresh avocado kind of got condensed really, you know, just into one little bit. Um, this would be good on salads. I got, there's different flavors. There's like chili and sea salt and lime. I just got the plain sea salt just to get the natural flavors of it. But it's good. It kind of just melts in your mouth. Kind of like that freeze dried astronaut, astronaut ice cream. Pretty good. I could eat it, but it is quite expensive. It's $4.59. But most freeze-dried foods anyway, whether it be for this kind of snack or like emergency prep items, they're all expensive anyway because the process takes a long time to uh, freeze-dry. And the shelf life is pretty good when you freeze-dry things. So the next thing I noticed, because I'm an olive lo lover, he has these little packs of olives and they've got different flavors as well. I got the chili and garlic. There's just garlic and rosemary and other kinds. So I wanted to try it because I love pitted olives. This is Kalamata olives. Um, it is an acquired taste, but if you like Greek olives, then you'll definitely like this. And again, a great concept to have these items because you can just take it on the go if you're in a rush for work and you need something to snack on and you can just eat it. All right, so this is the olive. Again, if you've never had Greek olives, you probably won't like it because I didn't like it at first, but now I absolutely love them. Definitely get that hit of chili and it is garlicky. Um, it's nice and juicy. You don't have to worry about the pit. I think it's pretty cool. I know these aren't local foods, but these are delicious. And if you're looking for something new and, you know, just to sample, why not uh, try all these interesting things that uh, Mr. Stephen Neat knee is bringing in so for that little pack it's only a dollar 59 and it's got a quite a bit of olives in there uh, this whole container is like 30 calories so you could keep munching on these and you're good all right so those were the only four items i was going to show you from knee superette but uh mr knee was very nice and gave me one more thing on the house it's a superfood cookie with chocolate and chia. It's supposed to be plant-based. Um, I'm trying to be healthier. Uh, most of the week I eat raw vegan because I eat so much of these foods doing these YouTube things. It is definitely not healthy to be doing that often. So when I'm doing my work week, I actually do eat kind of plant-based. I'll have chicken here and there, but um, yeah, let's try it. I mean, I'm kind of picky, though, with these processed vegan things because I'm very sensitive. I can taste chemical tastes and different weird things. Like, I don't like Impossible Burgers. I can taste something funky in there and all that stuff. So let's try it, though. This is, uh, it looks very uh, chocolatey already. You can see all that chocolate just oozing out of it. You know, I could get to like that. I don't taste any funky chemical tastes. The texture is good. What's throwing me off at first was the crunchiness of the chia seeds, which I've had before. I used to make chia pudding for breakfast, but that's not what I expect in a chewy chocolate chip cookie, but it's good. The taste is good. It is chocolatey. It almost have that, has that creamy taste that you would want from a cho milk chocolate type of dessert. And hey, it's healthy and it tastes good. Honestly, it really does. And I am very picky, like I said. So this is the Love and Chew Superfood Cookie. 
and it's $3.99 for this cookie. All plant-based, very delicious. So definitely go to Nee Superette. Thank you very much to Mr. Nee for sharing his story about his store and his family history and all the different products that they sell. Um, definitely go there. It's been over 100 years since his family store has been there. And that's pre-World War II. That's kind of crazy, and it's still going strong. And it's kind of interesting where he's having this new concept where you have this old school superette, but inside has all kinds of new school small mom and pop things from around the world and in the U.S. mainland. So it's interesting that you can have all these healthy, tasty foods from different small companies around the world, but also get your ahi poke and your dried ahi and your lihimoi fix. They also have uh, raw dog food uh, for pets, and it's made by um, a local Hawaii company, and he said it's actually super popular. People come in and within uh, two months that freezer has to be refilled and that's a pretty big freezer. They also sell chicken feed, rooster feed for all your fighting roosters and uh, your koi food and rabbit food even and other bird seeds. So definitely check out the place. It's got a lot of nostalgia inside. And again, thank you, Mr. Stephen Nee for uh, showing me around. I really appreciate it. And now to our last stop. All right, guys, the last stop is at Fort Ruger Market, right on the foot of Diamond Head with beautiful views going into it. It's an old school mom and pop shop. Uh, been here since the late 1930s. I've been here once before and they're famous for their poke bowls. But when you walk in, there's other things, Hawaiian plates, Filipino plates, homemade lechon. They've got homemade chicharrones, boiled peanuts, pumpkin crunch, homemade kimchi, to pickled mango. They got it all for your munchies. And I got their poke bowl. I got their Fort Rugerlicious. I think that's what it's called. Um, poke, it's their special poke you can only get there. I got it with white rice. You can get brown rice as well as sushi rice. And you can pick a different side. I don't remember what kind of size there were. I know there was lomi lomi salmon, but I got their kimchi. So let's taste it. Looks like there's, um, fresh chunks of ahi with a little bit of onion and lots of toasted sesame seeds on it. A nice sweet flavor to it. Not too sweet, but it's like a sweet and savory thing going on. You've got the nice oniony taste. A little bit of spice, but it's not too spicy. And the toasted sesame seeds give it a good flavor. The fish is good. It's claimed to be fresh fish. It's not frozen. Everything tastes good. This is a mini, by the way, so I could only imagine what a regular is. You can also get a poke bowl with the poke, the rice, the side, and a meat entree, such as their homemade lechon. Let's taste this kimchi. Looks delicious. Actually, tastes really good. Good kimchi, nice crunch. A little bit sour, but not too sour goes really well with this rice and poke. Rice is cooked perfect. This is hitting the spot for sure. Delicious. And might I say that service was very friendly. They've got all kinds of poke there that you can't actually find other places like a ponzu type of poke. They got raw taco kimchi poke, raw taco wasabi poke, different kinds of things that you don't really see they have hamachi poke even so go check it out if you've never been for some unique poke finds actually what i thought was onions is actually pieces of like tegu some kind of polack fish or cuttlefish i'm not sure but it's delicious i really like this poke yeah that's what it tastes like I like that sweet and savory but not too spicy tegu sauce it's delicious. Good thing I paired it with this kimchi. If you're wondering what the mini costs, it is $16.95, but it's a pretty big bowl for a mini. And I'm pretty stuffed, I mean, I'm happy. And I got one more thing that I found that was unique for um, the store. Um, you don't really see it. If you wanna buy it, it's usually on the side of the road or your neighbor makes it. And 
if you're nice enough and you're on their good list, they give it to you. It is some pickled mango. It is a summertime treat for Hawaii folks and just makes your mouth water when you talk about it. So let's dig into this. If you don't know what pickled mango is, it's usually green mangoes that are crispy. So it's not like the ripe ones that are mushy. They're cut into like these chunks or slices, kind of like apple slices. They're a little thick and they're brined in a vinegar sugar mix. I know that sounds gross, but it actually works. And it also has lihi moi in it. It's almost like the only thing I can compare it to is licorice or like an anise f flavor or a tagine is the closest. It actually looks like lihi moi too. So that Mexican powder you get on the fruits, even on mangoes in Mexico, that's kind of the closest I can think of lihi moi would be. So let's dig in and try this. Mm. Crunchy sweet. Got a little tang from the vinegar and also the green mango, which is also a little bit sour. It's not sweet like the ripe mango. It's got a little bit of a vanilla-ish licorice taste. I don't know how to explain it from the lihi moi, which gives it the red color. And just a crunch and it's refrigerated so the juice is cold. So it's a great summertime snack. So that was my market tour. There are many more markets all around Oahu and other islands. Uh, I will probably do a part two with other markets, probably more on the North Shore side and other places. But where in the world can you go to what you think is a neighborhood market and get all these awesome food finds? Usually when you go to a little mini mart uh, in the mainland, it's just to get, um, if you're old school, your parents a pack of cigarettes. Uh, you can get beer and maybe some snacks that are already prepackaged by a big company, such as like potato chips or, um, you know, those kind of things. And just like canned goods. But here in Hawaii, we're a little bit unique because you get to have, you know, freshly made things every day that are unique to that particular market. And they're all different. Um, some are a little similar, but they all have their own um, spin-off on it, which makes that one particular store unique. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's kind of like an ode to an old school mom and pop shop type thing and nostalgia, which I'm into. And um, I hope to see you next week on another food adventure. If you like this, press the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again next time. Peace out.